Since 2015, Assassin's Creed has gotten further and further from its roots, becoming less of a game about assassins and Templars, and more of an open world game trying really hard to be The Witcher 3. Both Origins and Odyssey didn't really do it for me as Assassin's Creed games, or even good RPG games for that matter. And while both games did have a few good moments, I felt that overall they were mainly just overly bloated, grindy, and repetitive, full of forgettable characters, a common theme with a lot of Ubisoft games in the last few years. From Far Cry to Watch Dogs, or Ghost Recon to Assassin's Creed, almost every Ubisoft game has way too much filler, repetitive, bland content, and to be honest, Valhalla isn't entirely devoid of these issues either. There is a definite level of grind and repetition that not everybody will enjoy, but I found that with Valhalla, these problems of grinding or repetition have been toned down a little bit, or at the very least, made less annoying. However, the game itself is long. I'm sure you've heard from others that it's longer than Odyssey, and they aren't wrong. The main questline in Valhalla is definitely longer than Origins or Odyssey, and if you don't like the sound of that, then this probably isn't the game for you. But unlike Origins or Odyssey, it didn't feel like a slog or grind to get through to me. Valhalla was just a long game. A long game that I did enjoy playing from beginning to end. It has a great world to explore between Norway and England, a good number of interesting characters and story arcs throughout the various territories, and the RPG aspects of the game are the best they've been since they've made this transition to open world RPG. Whether that be increasing your own skill tree to improve your combat skills, building up your settlement to increase your clan's strength, or forging and upgrading your weapons and armor, the RPG aspects are actually pretty well done here. I've spent over 70 hours with Valhalla, and while there are a few flaws with the game, I can easily say this is the best Assassin's Creed game we've had in years. And if you're a fan of the series, there's definitely a lot of things you'll love. Valhalla has a really strong start, and it keeps its strong momentum for at least the first 10 hours or so. Introducing you to some good characters, familiarizing you with Norway and a few of the game's systems, then ultimately setting sail for England and getting a taste of raiding and conquering with your clan. After this, the game does slow down a bit in pacing and it starts to feel more like the open world game that it is, giving you the option of exploring or continuing the main questline, or if you're like me, a little bit of both. I was really able to just play Valhalla at my own pace, whether that be stumbling upon side missions and world events or finding hidden treasure, it all felt like natural exploration and natural encounters. The side missions or world events as they're called in Valhalla actually feel like just that, world events. They aren't any Witcher 3 quality side content, but they genuinely feel like you've stumbled upon a moment, a real moment happening in the world. For example, there's one world event where these two guys are trying to fake a raid on their own home so they can roleplay how they would defeat the real raiders if they ever were attacked or something. And they're like burning down their house and they start to panic and you need to help them save a few of their valuables inside. Or there's another event where a girl is trying to trick people into catching fish for her by claiming her brother was turned into a fish and she needs to catch him to reverse his spell, but really she just wanted to get some free fish without doing the work. There's just a lot of these short little contained moments in the world that are far more memorable than just another fetch quest. Most of them have some level of charm to them at the very least, which not only made exploring less boring, but made me want to actively seek out these events because they were pretty fun and interesting. Whereas in Odyssey or Origins, side content, in my opinion, was very uninteresting to come across. Usually an NPC would task you with collecting three of the same item for them, or task you with killing someone far away and then return to them to collect the bounty. You know, the most basic of basic fetch quests. They were really awful in those games. But in Valhalla, they're much better. If you're not encountering world events, then you're likely searching for treasure, which is armor set pieces, weapons, or upgrade materials. There's almost too much of this treasure hunting, I'll admit. But honestly, it wouldn't be so bad if some of the treasure was a little bit less tedious to unlock. There are a ton of treasure chests for these various items, and pretty much every single one of these chests involves a puzzle of some kind. Some are easier than others, but it's not really the difficulty of these puzzles that's annoying, because they're really not too tough, it's just the amount of time it takes. I mean, you've already gone out of your way to explore the map and find these treasure places, but then the game makes you solve these puzzles or find keys far away that are locked behind other puzzles, and it just kind of takes too much time. Not that finding these things should be easy, but the time it takes to get these chests just adds up and detracts from the really fun exploration of the world, like world events or raiding villages. 
It's only a small complaint because it's not the worst thing, but definitely can get tedious to open up so many chests in an area. Sometimes you'll solve a puzzle or make your way to an underground tunnel and you'll come across a chest, only to realize that the chest now needs a key. So then you have to leave the area, go find the key, and then come back to the chest and unlock it. It can just get a little bit... Ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. Raiding is another pastime of the open world. Some raids will happen during the main quest line, but others are your choice to activate in the open world. And raiding villages or fortresses is necessary for upgrading your settlement and constructing new buildings, so they're pretty important to complete. And raiding is pretty much what you'd expect a Viking raid to be. Just you and your crew rolling in, kicking ass, smashing through the guards, burning things down while you loot big chests full of supplies. I completed all the raids in the game and they didn't ever get too repetitive really. I paced them out well enough so it wasn't like I was constantly raiding or felt the need to raid all the time. And overall I feel like the raids were a great viking power fantasy that happens to be really rewarding. The open world has other collectibles and things to come across like wild animal boss fights and cursed areas that you need to cleanse. There's also some great mini games inside Valhalla like a dice game called Orlog that's really fun to play. It's no Gwent from The Witcher, but it's still pretty dang fun. Flighting is another great addition, which is basically an old school rap battle between people in this world. Silent whispers all claim that you're terribly dense. Then you've clearly misheard them. My wit is immense. Oh, you looked out with that one. And doing these flighting challenges increases your charisma for dialogue options in the game. There's a few other mini games like drinking games that keep you busy and overall I think these small additions are pretty awesome. And the open world here is again the best Ubisoft has made in years, at least for an Assassin's Creed game. The main story quest, or should I say quests, are also surprisingly pretty good. The overarching goal mainly is to form alliances with other settlements and kingdoms to basically conquer England or at least settle new lands amongst the Saxons. This leads to conflict between a few kingdoms who don't want the pagans, aka us Vikings, to be settling in England. The biggest threats are the kingdoms of Wessex, Northumbria, East Anglia, and Mercia, and many battles take place through the main story quest involving each of these kingdoms. But like I mentioned, there are other settlements and kingdoms that you can ally with, and each of these other kingdoms or settlements have their own self-contained storylines that you play through to earn their alliances. So you'll maybe help one kingdom fight off an enemy, or you'll help another kingdom solve the murder of its king, or prevent a slaughter of innocents in a settlement, whatever it may be, the self-contained stories within are actually pretty good. You meet a whole bunch of characters, and honestly most of them were pretty memorable. And your main character Eivor ends up having great relationships with them. Some of the story arcs are better than others for sure, I think there's about 14 in total, but overall they serve their purpose well with the intent of Alliance. And by the end of the storyline, you kind of gather everybody that you've made alliances with, and they all kind of come together in the last few hours of the game. And it's really great to see all the progress you've made all come together at once for the finale. There were also some pretty unexpected story moments and welcome surprises, like the Assassin's implementation of the story that I really loved. The main Assassin you talk to is Bassum, and he is easily one of my favorite characters in the game. And you work with Bassum and another Assassin known as Hytham, to fight the Order in the world, and the payoff for killing all the members of the Order is seriously really great, but I won't spoil anything else about the Assassins or the Hidden Ones as they're called in this game because it's great to experience on your own. And just a minor spoiler alert here guys, skip ahead to the time on screen if you want to skip the spoilers, but there's another 3 hour quest line that really surprised me, the Asgard and Jotunheim storyline. It takes place in Eivor's dreams, but it's really awesome to go to Asgard. I think they did an incredible job with its design artistically. The Asgard storyline itself could be a little slow or boring at times, at least I thought it could be. But overall, it was an incredible addition and easily could have been a DLC or something, but I'm glad Ubisoft didn't cut it from the game and sell it as a DLC. It's really cool that it's here in the base game. The weapons and armor in Valhalla I felt were also really great. Instead of being like a looter game like Odyssey, Valhalla instead chooses to focus a bit more on upgrading and focusing on more quality items. Not that there isn't a lot of weapons or armor sets, because there definitely is, but I opted to focusing on leveling just a few weapons and armor throughout the game to maximum quality, which enhanced their look and their overall stats. 
I think by the end I was looking really good in the Raven set, and the weapons I used were pretty powerful. There's also some crazy weapons out there to find, like Thor's Hammer and Excalibur, which is really cool, and I overall much preferred this weapon and armor system to that of Odyssey or Origins. Something that I'm still a little undecided about is the combat in Valhalla. It feels almost magnetic and too jittery and initially was kind of off-putting to me. After the first 10 hours or so, I started to enjoy it more with the upgrades and additions from my skill tree, and I got the hang of it a bit more, but it still feels just a little off and underwhelming. But that's a problem I've had with pretty much all the games since Origins with this new engine. I never really liked the combat in Origins or Odyssey, but at least here in Valhalla, enemies aren't insane damage sponges anymore. Sure, there are still a few boss encounters that have higher health, but generally speaking, they've made the combat less tedious and boring by reducing the sponginess of the enemies, which I really appreciate. In Odyssey, you'd literally fight one guy for 10 minutes at times, just chipping away at their health. But here in Valhalla, it's much, much better in my opinion. They even brought back one-hit assassinations, Something I didn't ever think would be removed from an Assassin's Creed game in the first place, but I'm just glad to see them return because it gives you more reason to play stealthy, which is what I've always loved about Assassin's Creed. Infiltrating enemy territory undetected is still just the best part of Assassin's Creed, and I'm glad it's encouraged here, even inside a Vikings game. But I think they've actually struck a nice balance here in allowing you to really choose your approach, whether that be stealth or combat. A few certain quests don't allow a choice, where they sometimes want you to be sneaky or they want you to go in guns blazing, and raiding isn't necessarily a stealthy event in the world, but overall I feel like Valhalla did a great job letting me choose how I wanted to play. I had a few smaller gripes with the game, and one of the biggest was when you'd come across a world event that was level 340 inside of a level 90 zone. For example, there was one instance where I fought a big burly dude in a fist fight to dethrone him as the best fighter, and he was a level 90 and I was probably a level 100. And then a few hours later I came across a priest who was being a jerk to some people and it gave me the option to make him leave by beating him up, and he was like a level 280 and he one-shot me. And it just felt weird, especially when I'd come across these level gaps in lower level zones. It makes sense if this preacher guy was a level 280 inside a zone that was recommended level 280 but he wasn't. He was in a lower level zone. Sure, it made me say, oh, I'll come back later to fight him, but it happened a little more often than I'd liked. I didn't really like coming across insanely higher level enemies in lower level zones. It just doesn't make sense to intermingle such a high disparity in levels. In pretty much every game out there, the recommended level for a zone means content in this zone will be within this level, but here it just varies wildly, and I wasn't really a fan of that. Another problem that I had was sometimes you're given dialogue options that feel like a choice, but it really is just an illusion of choice because the character says a certain bit of dialogue anyway despite what you choose. It's kind of like the issue in Fallout 4 where you're given the option of saying yes or no, and despite which one you pick, the same outcome will happen. There are some genuine choices that do have different outcomes like choosing to kill or spare someone, but they aren't really as impactful as you'd think they would be. And the final gripe I had was Eivor was kind of just a bland character. He or she really doesn't feel like a character. It almost felt like I was playing a Bethesda game, where you're a silent protagonist who doesn't really have character traits or anything, and your existence is just to keep the plot moving. And that's how Eivor feels, despite him not being a silent protagonist. Almost every single response Eivor has in dialogue is pretty much just a neutral, fence-sitting position, and his dialogue doesn't really give me an idea of who Eivor is or what Eivor really thinks or cares about. Unlike Ezio, for example, or Edward, who were really great characters and were relatable, or within The Witcher, like Geralt, who is a real character you care about and has a personality. But again, Eivor just feels like a silent protagonist who you don't really relate to and who just exists to drive the game's narrative. Despite these few gripes I had, I really did enjoy my time with Valhalla. I haven't enjoyed an Assassin's Creed game in years, the last one I really liked was Unity. After the bug fixes, Unity was a pretty dang good game, but that game came out in 2014 and since then the games have really not interested me or impressed me that much at all, until Valhalla. Not everyone will enjoy it and I fully understand the problems people have with the game, they're the same kind of critiques that every Ubisoft game gets and honestly, I can't be bothered to play too many Ubisoft games these days. When most of them take about 60 hours to complete, it's just 
a little much, especially when they're filled with a lot of filler content. But like I mentioned earlier, I feel like Valhalla was handled with a little bit more care, even if just by a little bit. There's fun to be had here, and I think they nailed the Viking theme in Old England era. But that's going to be it for this video guys, hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, and subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.